Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Robert D'Alessio, and I'm the host of Rob's Inner Circle Broadcasting Worldwide. I'd like to welcome each and every one of the audience members who are tuning in this evening. I'd like to give the usual shout-out to the producer of Rob's Inner Circle, Jenny Duhame, and to the podcast technician on our show, Patty Lady Starlight Saragossa. Make sure to watch all of our productions on the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel. We invite you to comment, share, click on the like button, subscribe to the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel, and hit that notification bell. Because anytime a new production is out, you will be the first to know. Well, folks, it's time to get into our weekly ritual once again. It's time to sit back, relax, take a deep breath, kick up your feet on the edge of the table, and let us carry the load. Folks, it's a showtime. It is time to bring on our eager guest who is backstage and he just can't contain himself. He just can't wait to come on onto our show. He's most famous for his appearances on The Dragon's Den, L'Eau's Dragon. He's an outspoken chef. Really nice guy, and I can't wait to introduce him to you. Ladies and gentlemen, here is tonight's star attraction on Rob's Inner Circle, Peter Costa. Hey, guys. How you doing? Peter Costa, such a pleasure to have you on our show. Thanks for dropping by. Pleasure. Pleasure to be here, Bobby. So tell us, Peter, over the past weekend, you were quite a busy fellow. What, 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 wow, what? we were super busy, Bobby, this weekend. We were at the Italian Festival of Montreal, which was a beautiful thing to show all our Italian traditions from all over Italy. This weekend, I was at the Melrose Resto Bar Cafe, which has a fun, phenomenal place and also was voted best uh, pizza in Little Italy. They came in third, and they're in the top 10 uh, best pizzas in Montreal. Uh, so very good. And we did a tasting there of our Costa vegan bolognese sauce and our new Sicilian marinara sauce. It was a big success. The people, they love the sauce. And the comments we got were great. Everybody was telling me, you know what? Our sauce does not taste like a jarred sauce. It tastes like a homemade sauce like you would be making at home. And the reason for that, Bobby, is that we only use the best ingredients. You have to understand that we, we wanted to... I, I didn't want to just sell sauce uh, to make a sauce, right, and to make money. What, what I wanted to offer, because a lot of sauce products out there... <coughs> <coughs> sorry. ...are made with uh, a lot of chemicals, citric acid, phosphoric acid which are very dangerous for you. So I decided to make a healthy, natural Italian sauce like you would find at home. Uh, so we import our tomatoes from Puglia, Italy. We work with 400 farmers that produce uh, Italian San Marzano tomatoes and Roma tomatoes in Puglia, Italy. And the difference is that our tomatoes you see, if you take the same seed of those tomatoes and plant them here, for example, uh, the tomato, the skin is going to be thin. It's going to be full of water and full of seeds. The only reason for that is, is that they don't get enough sun. As well as in the south of Italy, in the peninsula of Puglia, our tomatoes get an average of 2,700 hours of sun per year, cooled off by the Mediterranean salty breeze, which gives the flavor and the taste of this tomatoes and also the natural ingredients that it needs. And also, the tomatoes are more meaty. That means that there's almost no water in them. The skin is very, very thick and almost no seeds. So when we squeeze the juice out of that, that's what makes the tomatoes, uh, the sauce, taste so good. Also, of course, we have our special uh, mix of Italian spices in there, which is the secret to the sauce. The sauce has a little bit of a spicy kick that no other sauces have out there. And that's like our secret recipe. And uh, the only reason why I decided to make a vegan uh, meat bolognese is because most real meat bolognese sauces in the jars, what happens is that the meat rots. 
So what happens is that you got to put a lot of chemicals to make sure that that doesn't happen. So we decided to do a uh, vegetable protein sauce using P, uh, PVT, it's called. It's a, a plant uh, protein, which is mostly done with the soya bean or the pea bean, you know. So we started doing it with the, with the peas because... So what happens is you take those peas, you crumble them, you mix them, and it becomes like a little crumble, right? And then we add our spices and our juices to uh, make it taste like real meat. And, you know, our motto is, can't believe it's vegan. A lot of people, if I don't tell them that there's no meat in the sauce, they, they won't believe you. I've even had vegans call me and say, hey, there's meat in your sauce, right? So there's uh, so it's all plant-based organic ingredients. Also, you see... When I started the first recipe, uh, I used like regular salt and regular sugar, and there wasn't one healthy store that would touch me, right? And even the uh, the PVT uh, that we were using had uh, caramel coloring, you know, to make it look like meat. So uh, that's a, a, a phosphate, and uh, that's a no-no in the health business. So today, we use only organic uh, PVT, we, our sugar is organic cane sugar. Our salt is organic Mediterranean sea salt. Our uh, And all our herbs and uh, spices are all fresh, right? So that's what makes the big, big, big difference, right? And also, most of the sauces out there, 70% of it is water. In our sauce, we use no water, no paste, no preservatives, right? What we use is passata, like the Italians do. So we use real plum Italian tomatoes and passata to, uh, to replace basically the water. And our sauce is very thick. So if you put our sauce in a strainer, you're going to see that there's almost no water in there. It's all good tomato sauce. Peter, and I think I, we got the best sauce on the market. Peter, I, w I wanted to, to just uh, make a comment there. Uh, you say the tomatoes come from Pula, a region in Italy. Obviously, for those who are not exactly familiar with Pula, Bari would be the capital. Uh, tell us, uh, yes, I understand that they get 2,700 uh, hours of sunlight with the Mediterranean sea salt and uh, what, what have you. Isn't there any way to find a compromise right here, right at home, in greenhouses? You can always, you know, have. I, 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 I tried. I tried to do that here. We were at Lufa Farms, which Lufa Farms wants to encourage uh, local uh, cultivators, and so did I. So we tried to make uh, a sauce here with with uh, Quebec tomatoes, right? The problem is, is that I'll get tomatoes at a good price when it comes harvest season, which is like now in September. But then what happens, we can't find tomatoes January, February, and March. And then when we do find tomatoes, uh, we find greenhouse tomatoes that are organic. But you see, when I buy them from the Quebec farmers, you know, I'll pay it a dollar a pound. But then when it comes to winter, and if I have to buy greenhouse tomato, it costs $4 a pound. And that um, unbalances the structure of the pricing. You know what I mean? And everything has gone up, Bobby, in the last year due to COVID and due to the wars and, and, and the thing. I've had three price increases in tomatoes in the last year. Wow. You know, cardboard boxes went up, and the price of gas to deliver our sauces to the store. So everything has gone up. Everything costs money. And if you want a good product, well, you know, uh, you're better off paying a couple of dollars more and eating something that's healthy for your family and your kids. And that's what we want to do. We want to offer you a healthy product that's packed with protein and packed with vitamins, you know. Did you mention that uh, the, your products are all gluten-free? Because that's very important. Our, and our products are all OGM-free, synthetic pesticide-free, and 100% gluten-free. And you also said, if you go back, folks, to episode 96 of Rob's Inner Circle, it was actually a uh, hybrid episode between Rob's Inner Circle and the beginning of uh, Seriously Live, a new podcast, uh, actually a live show that we have with Esther, who's tuned in. Esther, uh, Esther Brzezinski. Hi, Esther. How are you doing? 
she's tuned in this evening. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, Jenny as well, who's uh, another one of uh, my co-hosts. So if you go back, you're going to see uh, Peter was talking about the uh, olive oil that is used to make his tomato sauce, and it's extra virgin olive oil imported from Sicily. So Organic. You, organic. organic. Okay, so you see organic, that. Organic, you know, extra virgin, first press olive oil from Sicily we use in our, in our sauce. So that's very important, too. Uh, you know, so the quality of the olive oil, uh, the quality of the tomatoes, the quality ingredients, and uh, that's what gives our sauce the homemade taste. We have a uh, an array of um, audience members tuning in, and this is really delightful. We have a uh, Vicky Saint Cartier. She's from Ontario. I hope I got this right. I hope it's Kingston, Ontario. And we have also Pietro Muro. Uh, thank you for tuning in, uh, Pietro. Uh, so so appreciated. So you were telling us that um, you have an association with Melrose Restaurant, and there's there's family involved here at Melrose, right? Well, uh, the 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 restaurant belongs to uh, Jim Scalia and uh, Steve, uh, and they're uh, my second cousins. They're first cousins with my mom, and uh, they're very very nice people, hardworking, honest, and they make good food. You Their know, sandwiches and pizzas are really, really good to die for. While we're at it, why don't we plug Melrose Restaurant? Where are they located exactly, Peter? Melrose is uh, 6845 St. Lawrence. I think they're between uh, Beaubier and uh, Saisotic. And I actually visited uh, Melrose Restaurant, and indeed it is a very cozy place. Food is very good. Yeah, it's it's very nice. The daytime is like a full time restaurant, and at nighttime, it turns into uh, you know like a more like of a cocktail bar, right? And uh, it's really, really, really fun. Uh, really fun place to go. Beautiful people, and really, really brings the Italian uh, community uh, back to Little Italy. You're very well known, actually, most known for your appearances both on the CBC televisions, The Dragon's Den, and Radio Canada, Ladies Dragon. So let's take each and every one of those shows, separate them. Tell us about your. Well, you know, the popularity, Bobby, the popularity first came out when I won the cooking contest at Souper Presque Parfait. Okay, let's talk about I, it. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, five years ago, I did the Spé Presque Parfait, and I uh, and I won that contest. It was very funny, very entertaining. It was a very, very good experience, and the public uh, kind of fell in love with us there. And then uh, they invited me back because they have people vote who they want to see back on that show, <laughs> and I was chosen by the public to do again the second time. So I did Spé Presque Parfait twice, uh, so everywhere I go, people recognize me from that show. Then a uh, couple I, of years I, later, Peter, when Peter, sorry, I, I just wanted to elaborate a little bit more on the soupe presque parfait. Okay, what is the whole process? How do you go about going on to a soupe presque parfait? Are you you have to submit yourself? Are you chosen at random? You How have to you, you have to pass an interview. You have to okay. pass an interview. You have to sign up, and then you have to pass an interview. Uh, they ask you so many questions to see if you're the type of uh, person they would like to see on that show. And basically, the concept of the show is uh, every night we go to one of the contestants' houses and they cook a meal and we vote on it. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of uh, sometimes, you know, their chemistry between uh, the guests is not so good. So it makes it funny because, you know, little arguments pop up here and there. But it was a very, very much fun experience. I really enjoyed doing that. And that's the way really how it works, right? So, Peter, we have one of your biggest supporters here that is tuned into our show, Mr. Chef, excuse me, not Mr. Chef Fernando Renzo, who uses your sauce and thinks it's, it's the best sauce in the world. Fernando uh, if you have a question, all audience members, if you have a question for Peter, please don't be shy. Go Thank ahead. Thank you so much, Fernando, for loving our sauce. <laughs> Actually, I was part of the, the uh, tasting experience. We had our show um, sometime in May at Gallo Nero, 
Uh, a little shout out to Johnny. Yeah, that was a fun night the, as well. All of the um, the staff over there, are really great people as well. They use your sauce as well. So uh, yes, like uh, a, Johnny, yeah. Johnny now uh, also a great uh, Napolitan restaurant. They also make fantastic food. Galonero is a top notch, also a family business, uh, and uh, the food is just amazing there as well. Also, uh, a lot of fun. Uh, Johnny's a super, super fun guy, and he knows his uh, his food. He's from Napolitan, so you know, Napolitans, they're known for making the best pizza. He makes a fantastic margarita as well, as well as some pasta dishes there that are just to die for. And, you know, more and more people are asking for uh, vegetarian and vegan options. So uh, Johnny's going to be, uh, Johnny buys our sauce to offer also vegan and vegetarian option to his customers in his pizzas and in his pastas. Yes, okay. And we have a, um, actually, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it pinpointed. The episode was... Jenny's and Esther's birthday special that we had at Gallo Nero, and it was May 9th. And the Gallo wow. Nero, yeah, that was a on, fun, fun time. Yeah, uh, Gallo Nero is located on Jerry Street East in St. Leonard, a really fun place to be, really, really great. And we also had a comment again from Fernando Renzo, who says he uses his sauce to enhance every dish. Wow, thank you so much, Fernando. And uh, Peter, you know what? You are making a real splash in it because we have Raul who is tuning in from Los Angeles, California. You know, he could be your entry to the California market. Speaking of which, your, your sauces are now available in the U.S., but how did all that come about? Well, we have uh, one of our team players. Her name is uh, Joanne Arnold, which is the president of uh, Costa Vegan USA. And she uh, is basically from uh, Maryland, but now she's uh, retired into Portugal, but she still has a lot of ties into the U.S. And we have uh, Barbara Cirque and Roger Cirque uh, that uh, really wanted to introduce. They, love our, our, they loved our sauce. They were... They, they started off as customers, and they really wanted to become distributors of our sauce in the United States. And uh, they're doing very well. Uh, we are in now in five stores in Maryland and in Baltimore. And also, uh, we just hired uh, uh, Veronique Bohemier that will be uh, entering our sauce in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, and Miami. Also, uh, Georgia. And of course, eventually, we'd like to hit uh, Los Angeles, uh, Las Vegas, San Francisco, uh, California. So, Raul, if you have any interest in uh, selling sauce, get in touch with me. <laughs> Raul, this is a good chance for you to earn a great we, living. Because we did a lot of work, life, and Raul. we have the permits now to ship sauce anywhere in the world. So our sauce is FDA-approved. Our labels are FDA approved. All the paperwork is done. Of course, there's many, many costs involved when we do these things. And our facility is a top A1 facility. It's a gluten-free facility. So no flour products go in, in there. It's also allergy-free. That means there's no nuts, nothing like that. And uh, we have all the permits now to ship sauce anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Okay, so now you started off with Canada. How far have you uh, gone well, into the Canadian market? So far, we're in 350 stores uh, across Quebec, Ottawa, and uh, Gatineau. But we've been reaching out to uh, the majors in uh, Ontario, and there seems to be a very, very big interest in uh, clean, healthy, gluten-free, OGM-free, pesticide products in Ontario. Uh, so uh, we're meeting with some big, big buyers in the coming weeks. Uh, we're talking, you know, Loblaws, uh, Sobeys, and uh, there's a big interest with Costco as well. So we got to, you know, work all our numbers out and everything and, uh, you know, make sure everything works. But uh, 
I think uh, by this fall we'll be able to uh, to get our, our products uh, all over Ontario. Also uh, here in Quebec now because you know uh, one of the biggest problem in business today is manpower, right? Uh, nobody can seem to find employees these days. And uh, so for that reason, we have a team. We have uh, Salvatore Novembre that takes care of the Laurentians. And I have Joe Fauci, which uh, uh, is our director of sales and uh, development of a new business, the same title as Salvatore. So one guy takes care of the North Shore. One guy takes care of the South Shore. And also, uh, we have many locations in Quebec City, Granby, Three Rivers, Sherbrooke. So, so we're all over the place. If you look around, uh, you you probably could find uh, a store within uh, 15, 20 minutes from anywhere you are in the province. Uh, we're in more and more stores. Uh, we got another uh, four locations in RDP last week and another four locations in St. Leonard. So uh, there's more and more locations coming up. And also, we just hooked up with a, with a distributor. You know, I, in the beginning, I didn't want to go with a distributor. I wanted to build a sales team and because I've been in sales all my life. But it, it, the game is not the same anymore, right? And the overheads are just so high uh, that I decided to go with Arizona Tour. Arizona Tour is a major distributor of only healthy products. They don't carry the commercial brands that you find in, in the stores. All they do is there has to be organic ingredients, gluten-free, pesticide-free, or else they will not carry their product. And they, they serve over 1,500 stores in Quebec. So, of course, all these things take time, but uh, soon will be uh, listed in all the major stores like uh, Rachel Berry, Avril, Chetal. So that's all in the works right now. So probably by this fall, we will be in all these major healthy stores. Peter, there are lots of people tuning in, uh, new uh, new viewers tuning in who are probably not in on the loop. Uh, I'd like to welcome you. Uh, first of all, thank you for tuning in. Tonight, our guest is the owner, the uh, the founder of a Vegan, of the Costa Vegan Foods. Costa here. Vegan Foods. That's right, Costa Vegan Foods. And now at the supermarkets, you, you can find an IGA right now and other, other stores, over 350. We're in, we're in over 150 IGAs. We're in about 50 Provigos, 50 metros, a lot of independent shops. So if you need to find the location, just go on our website and click on Find the Store or just send me a messenger and I'll tell you who's got the sauce uh, the closest to your house. Well, actually, Peter, we did. Uh, we, we, we're going to take a lot of that work away from you. And right now, at the bottom of our screen, we have the website where people can go and get some information. They can find out all about uh, uh, the. Yeah, and you can order our sauce online through Matsure and through Chef Biological. Exactly. So. Peter, you uh, okay? We were talking about uh, soupy presque parfait, but for those of the members in the audience who don't know, it was a very popular show uh, going back, let's say, from the eighties up until nineteen ninety-five. It was called uh, Rocky Belzarei, and the narrator of uh, soupy presque parfait is André Ducharme, who was part of that group. So yes, André Ducharme, very good uh, commentator. Uh, uh, Anjali Ducharme was uh, working at the local convenience store where I, as a kid, used to go get my bubble gum. Wow, what a small girl. world. And that was just like at the beginning of Rocky Bezarei. So, you know, just a shout out to Andre Ducharme and the rest of the gang. Um, there's also Andre. Guy Alapage, who is also um, the host of uh, Tout le monde en parle on uh, Radio Canada. So uh, a few of the fellows are still active. Once in a while, you might see the show, the show Z, the Silhouette as well. It was a good show back in the day. It was a lot of fun. So, uh, Peter, well, I don't think... <laughs> Sorry? Go ahead, Bobby. Yeah, you went from Esprit Presque Parfait, where you gained all that fame, and you end up on CBC Television's The Dragon's Den. 
So well, before that, that Bobby, thing. we did we did Le Dragon. Okay, let's which talk about is the Dragon. Quebec version, which is the Quebec version of the Dragons. Then. Okay, so talk to us about your experience on Le Dragon and uh, what happened. Let's say from the selection process, from the audition to the actual. Uh, well, that that was also very interesting. It was our. Uh, at the Radio Canada uh, studios here in Montreal. So uh, when you get in there, uh, looks like a big warehouse, but then there's all different kinds of studios there. And basically, it's, you know, it's the same concept as Dragons Den Canada, but for the Quebec market. And we had a big success there. Uh, our dragon that chose us at the time that was very interested into uh, uh you know, helping us with our brand was Caroline Neyron, right? Uh, and she was really excited and she's a fantastic girl, a nice person. We, 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 when we were doing the, reviewing the contract together, we really wanted to work together. But, you know, in life, things happen. Uh, right after that show, uh, she went through, uh, you know, a divorce and a whole bunch of other things and also, uh, you know, that took her away, I guess, from her business, and she had to declare bankruptcy, right? But I'm happy to see that she's back on her feet, and uh, she's doing more uh, what she was known for, uh, singing and acting, and I've seen her uh, on many uh, Quebec uh, series, uh, like the police series that's very popular right now, and uh, I'm very happy to see that uh, she got back on her feet. It would have been a real pleasure to work with her. And when we did that show, our email the next day blew up. We had over 1,500 sales online. Unbelievable. And we weren't really ready for it. You know, we were starting off and uh, we delivered all our sauces ourselves door by door uh, with the people we had. Of course, there were people that were far away that couldn't get our sauce. So we did our best to get the sauce out to everybody. But now uh, anybody in Quebec and Ontario could get our sauces on our website by clicking Matsure or Chef Biological. Well, you know, uh, Caroline Nero and you are not necessarily through because you never know one day your sauce is going to end up in the catering service on a movie set or on one of these television shows. So You never know. Be, you never you know. know. She's going to be eating that sauce and she'll say, hmm, I recognize this sauce. It's got something something about it. She's going to put well, it in. Well, you know, it, 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 takes a, it takes a long time for a brand to be known, you know, because exactly. people are used to seeing the old brands. And, you know, a lot of times when they're going to pass by and see Costa, they're going to say, what is this? I don't know this. Because, you know, advertising today costs a lot, a lot of money. Just to give you an example, just to do a 30-second commercial or even a, a two times a, a day uh, for three weeks, you're looking at $50,000, right? So uh, and the same thing with, uh, with social media advertising where it was uh, fun and, uh, and uh, you know, the prices were good. Today, uh, even social media advertising, uh, which we're doing right now, we're running an ad campaign on social media to promote ourselves. And you're talking tens of thousands of dollars, you know? So it's very hard. So I'm happy to be on the show to talk to the people about our product. Trying it is adopting it because you're getting, like we mentioned before, the best tomatoes from Puglia, which get 2,700 hours of sun per year, cooled off by the Mediterranean breeze, which gives our tomatoes a particular taste. We only use... San Marzano and Roma tomatoes in our sauce. No water, no paste, no preservatives, no OGMs, no synthetic pesticide, and of course, 100% gluten free. So and you're getting a real, real healthy product. Esther has just made a very interesting comment. There is way, there are ways of getting your product out there. It's through influencing influencers, social media influencers. You can do a great job. Through them. Well, uh, well, again, the influencers are not cheap today, right? So you're looking at uh, also one minute, two minute spots for six hundred, a thousand, and a thousand five hundred dollars. Well, you know what, uh, Peter? If you stick around after the show, we could probably help you with that because we know some influencers who are very, very reasonable. 
So, right. Well, we, good. Let's put us in touch with them. And we have some influencers right now. But, uh, you know, the more the better, right? We want to really get our people to go out and try our sauces, right? Uh, this weekend, I'll be doing a tasting in Longueuil. So if there's anybody in the South Shore, we'll Very be at Provo Longueuil doing a tasting this Saturday. And uh, the following week, there's not going to be no tasting. Peter. But there's going to be a tasting in the Riviere des Prairies in two yeah, weeks. Where in Longueuil is this going to be taking place? We want the audience to show up there. Where in Longueuil? It's probably go Le Marche on King George Street. In Longueuil. In Longueuil. Probably go Le Marche. So anybody that's on the South Shore and they want to come and uh, taste our sauce, they could come to Provigo Le Marche on King George Street in Longueuil. Okay. And that would be located between Adoncourt and Romantaria Boulevard, because I know the area I'm from there. There is a, a Dollarama that's not far away. Actually, a that's, that's right. So it's close to there, yeah. At a Walmart, you got a Canadian Tire, and it's a really uh, one of the nicer private gold stores. And yeah. People, you are, for those of you who have just tuned in, you're tuned in to Rob's Inner Circle this evening. Our guest is the founder of of the Costa Vegan Sauces. He's on our show talking about his products. Uh, Peter, we talked about uh, the impact that the Lodge Dragon had for you in your life. How about your experience on the Dragons then? Was it similar? That was a phenomenal experience. Oh, uh, yeah, so what, what we did, uh, we signed up to be a participant on the show. And again, there... Uh, we uh, it was a privilege to be part of that show. Uh, so we did uh, basically our uh, demonstration of our meatballs and our uh, vegan sauces uh, in my in my in my place, and uh, we impressed the uh, producers of the show, and then they call us down to audition into Toronto. And what was beautiful about that is that. You know that they, they see 3,000 auditions and they only pick uh, 50 people because they only do like uh, 13 or 26 episodes, right? Wow. And you have like maybe three contestants that you see per show. And we were very uh, fortunate to be one of the guests of the season 16 show. And they really, really loved what we did on that show because... Never in the history of Dragons Den Canada did the Dragons get up and sit on a table to have supper. Are so that was a first on Dragons Den. So oh we God, cooked you know a what? Sicilian Italian feast for them, and they all got up from their chair and had supper during our pitch on the Dragons Den Canada. <laughs> that is totally amazing. I just wish we could find a link to that show so the audience just go on CBC it. Dragons Den season 16. Click Peter Costa and you'll be able to see the whole show. Unbelievable. Hey, folks, you got to do that. Season 16 of the Dragon's Den and CBC television. That's season 16. And that would be the Peter Costa episode. Does it got a number? It, was uh, it doesn't have a number. It's just the season 16, Peter Costa. The link is going to pop up. And you can see uh, the whole uh, art pitch that we did on the show. It was very funny. We had a lot of, you know, what people <laughs> don't realize, uh, about television, you know, it's magic, right? Uh, we got bombarded with questions for an hour and a half. Really? <laughs> for an hour and a half, we oh, got bombarded crazy. with questions. And of course, there's, and, and you only saw seven minutes of that hour and a half. Okay. <laughs> so they edited and show you all the best parts of the show, right? Wow. But if you would have seen the whole hour and a half, we were swelling bullets at the questions they were asking us. And uh, you, you, I uh, was very, very nervous. And you know what? I got so nervous that when it came to uh, Arlene Stern, uh, I, I wanted to tell her, you're my favorite dragon, right? <laughs> and instead I said, I love you so much, I will take you out to dinner. And she says, I'll pass. <laughs> oh, but but it, that was nervous. And I was saying, how? You know, I, I would have never said that in normal times. But the nerves, all I wanted to tell her was that she was my favorite. But sometimes you're so nervous. You're getting so much bombarded by questions that the words just come out wrong, you know? So, so we, and we had fun because, you know, uh, Vincent Guzzo made us an offer of $100,000 on that show. 
e dico sì, ah, lascia la Isha principessa lascia la Isha principessa so he got me so nervous that the words came out wrong when it came to her turn but we were very happy to get an offer from Vincent Guzzo and uh, we're still working out some details with his team because these contracts are very long and very complicated so uh, we're, we're still doing the due diligence and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to do something together but right now we're alone we're doing our own thing and uh, and that's it right and but it was uh, well. a phenomenal experience even and my chef that was boiling the sauce that's what they asked him Salvatore how do you cook so he goes oh I cooked the sauce for the pasta for 11 minutes you're like you you get totally uh, like stage fright really you know so uh But if you look at the show, we, we, we did an awesome job, I think. Well, you, you got such great practice on the Dragon's End that tonight on Rob's Inner Circle, you look so natural. You, you, and, you know, you, you're not intimidated. And you didn't even ask me out for supper because I would say yes. But well, that, that, uh, you know, we took you to Galonero. Now we'll be taking you to Melrose Cafe. You know, actually, I like the experience. So I would like to go out for supper again, but it's not about... Well, you know what? We'll do our next podcast at the Melrose. I'm going to speak to Jimmy tomorrow and Steve uh, tomorrow about it. <laughs> and uh, we will do our next podcast you know over what? there. Talk to my producer, Jenny Duhame. Work it out with her. We're going to work it out with Patty. Hey, you know, uh, if you can work something out with Jen, hey, listen, I'm in. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to speak with Jenny tomorrow, see what we can work out. And our next uh, podcast would be fun to do it there. So uh, besides Arlene Dis Dickinson, there was also, there was Vincent Guzzo as one of the panelists. Well, was Jim Tree leaving there, the retired RCMP policeman? No, he wasn't there. And actually... When season 16 started, he was supposed to be there. And he was the guy that I was really pitching uh, to offer the sauce, to offer vegan options at Boston Pizza, right? Uh-huh, exactly. And then at the last minute, he decided to take his retirement, and he was oh. replaced with uh, Wesley. Oh, boy. Okay. So, now... So, so yeah, you know, but I really, really wanted to get in... Uh, to get uh, to do business with Jim, you know? He's in retirement. Who knows? You know, if he tastes your sauce, he might decide to get out of retirement all of a sudden. You never know. You never know. But so far, you know, we're doing good. We just got into the American market. Uh, we're going to be uh, probably uh, blowing up in the Ontario market soon. We want to go across Canada. That's our major goal. And then, of course, we're going to work hard to go... Uh, Uh, across the United States. What, what, what I really liked about the stores that we have in, uh, in uh, the States, my sauce is right beside Paul Newman sauce in oh, the United wow. States. That, uh, that's great. So that was uh, very good. So if you go on my Facebook page, I did a post where you see my sauce side by side with Paul Newman sauce. And Paul Newman sauce is actually very successful. Actually, I haven't seen it here in a while. But I know it's very, very big down in the States. They do $60 million of business with the Paul Newman sauce in the United States. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. Hey, Peter, you know what? You're such a smart and talented fellow, and you're good at what you do. I predict you're going to do as well, perhaps slightly better. Who knows? <laughs> Well, you know, uh, the thing is, you know, people see my sauce everywhere. Everybody thinks I'm a millionaire, but uh, this is a volume business. The margins are, are very small. And, you know, because of COVID, you know, we, 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 we were doing very, very well. COVID uh, slowed us down because our best promotion uh, right now to get the word out there and to make people taste the sauce are the tastings that we do in the IGAs, in the metros, and in the provincials, because once they taste our sauce, people, they love it. I had a girl at the last tasting, as soon as she tasted, her eyes rolled back into her head, right? <laughs> and people say, oh, my God, it tastes homemade. It tastes homemade. And once they taste it, they come back. So you see, last tasting we did, we sold 83 jars of sauce from 11 to 3 o'clock. So if those 83 people tell one person, That's 160 people that will be going to that store looking for the sauce. 
So that's our best uh, tool right now for uh, promoting our sauce. And, you know, once you taste it and you see it, then you're going to want to pick it up, you know. And uh, tell okay, let's go back to the to your early days uh, when you discovered you wanted to be a cook. How is it that you, you know? Well, you know, I grew up that? like any other Italian kid, you know, always beside my mom. My mom and my grandmother were like a food factory. Uh, my grandmother would wake up at five o'clock in the morning to start making her uh, her Sunday meatballs. She would wake up at five o'clock in the morning and start preparing the dough to make homemade pasta or homemade pizza. So I was always beside them. Actually, I baked my first cake for my mother's birthday when I was seven years old. I used the Duncan Hines brand, but still, I was seven years old <laughs> and I made the cake. And I made a sugar frosting with the uh, candy uh, sprinkles, you know. And also, uh, my uncles had uh, French pastries called La Bitteroise, where they had three of them. They had one in uh, the Lord des Ormeaux at Marché de l'Ouest. They had one in saint de charles And they had one in saint Sauveur. So uh, even though I was... Uh, in the shoe business at that time, uh, I would go help them out on weekends, right? Because of my, my sales experience and because I love to be with my family. To me, family is the most important thing. And I would go help my uncles out. And we uh, did a lot of catering service there. So I was always the, the maitre d' and the cook to, uh, to prepare uh, the catering. So we did a lot of weddings, parties, baptisms. And I was always the, the number one guy to uh, to head up the service for the catering. So uh, I learned a lot about food through my grandmother, my mother, and my two uncles, which are master chefs. So uh, tell us, uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, you were growing up, you were you were also into pastries at one uh, point because yes. at Bello Narrows, well, well, when I started posting my, my my food on Facebook, I was selling cakes. And you were getting a lot of you tasted your your cannolis at Galloneros, and they were the most succulent, delicious cannolis I had. Thank you so tasted. much. Well, then again, there it's all about the ricotta, right? We 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 use only homemade ricotta when we make the homemade cannolis, right? So, uh, and you know, uh, you know, my uncles are very good, and I learned with them, so. I could uh, bake and I could make cakes and uh, I would get a lot of orders uh, on cakes. But again, there, it's a lot of work and the profit is not very high, right? Like to make a, a cake it takes two days because the first day you got to prepare the sponge, you got to prepare the ingredients and you cannot decorate the cake uh, at the same time that it comes hot out of the oven. So you got to make the sponge cool and then the next day you go decorate and some cakes uh, sometimes take three days to build the cake, right? So it's a lot of work because, you know, to decorate what the people want, you know, today they're more and more uh, picky and there's more and more modern stuff out there. You know, they want cakes to look like Gucci bags and stuff. So, so it's a lot of work. So, uh, uh, so, but still, you know, some friends of mine want some cakes and uh, stuff like that. We still make them. But right now, uh, we're just concentrating on the sauce. And we have some new products that are going to be coming out, hopefully, spring 2023, which are going to be our veggie burger, our okay. cauliflower so, pizza crust pizza, so, uh, and our meatballs. Okay, so talk to us about uh, these new products that are coming out. You're talking about the uh, veggie burgers. And uh, all these other products you're looking at. Uh, well, on, on the Dragon's Den show, we, we did our vegan meatballs, uh, which they absolutely loved. If you go click on the CBC uh, link, uh, you will see our meatballs there. Uh, the problem is is to find, uh, you know, a, co a good co-packer to produce them, right? And uh, so we're looking into that right now. And uh, so probably by spring 2023, our meatballs and our veggie burgers will be on the market as well. So you were talking about having some kind of a special show that we can have at Melrose Place. You want to hook something up? 
with our uh, friend and producer Jenny. So what we're, we're going to do, uh, Peter? Not only we're going to have our special show, let's try to do something where we're going to invite the audience from our show to come over to Melrose Place and come and have a taste of that delicious sauce of yours. And perhaps you could even um, you have a few jars uh, on the spot and uh, you probably have a lucky Yeah, order. absolutely. Well, right now, if you want to buy Costa Vegan Bolognese sauce in Little Italy, in that area, Melrose sells our sauce. Oh, that's fantastic. So you could go there, have a nice drink, and pick up a jar of our sauce. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, so, and, um, you know, and, uh, if, and if you're vegan or vegetarian and you want a wholesome uh, pasta dish or pizza, you can now have bolognese, arrabbiata, uh, pizza sauce, uh, a vegan at the Melrose uh, Resto Bar and Cafe. So uh, we will be there. You could pick it up. And you know what? That's a good idea. Uh, I'm going to speak with Jenny to invite guests over there, and we'll make a special menu uh, with our sauce uh, while we will be doing the podcast at the same time. I'm thinking in Voltini di Melanjani. I'm thinking uh, vegan Parmigiana. I'm thinking vegan lasagna. So... Uh, we're going to try to, uh, that would be a great idea. You know, so I will uh, talk with, Peter, with yeah. Jenny and we'll work something out. We're going to have to plan it because people such as Vicky Sankartier are going to be coming down from Kingston, Ontario, need the time to get here. The, you know, like give them a little bit of a, a head start, you know, like a. Yeah, a and it's going to be a beautiful like night of fun and laughter at the uh, Melrose, and people could have fun. They could enjoy a good meal and discover a healthy place and a beautiful resto and bar and discover fantastic healthy foods. So talk to us uh, about, you were telling us that you, there's some interest that you would like to have your own TV show or probably a social media show uh, produced. Yeah, we, we, we wanted to do that. But like I said, I'm so busy right now that I cannot cut myself in half, right? But eventually, uh, we were offered by Ichi Television uh, to be part of their uh, cooking show. But I'm so busy right now that I had to turn it down, right? But maybe, uh, you know, as, uh, as our, our, our company gets, uh, you know, like more, because uh, right now there's a lot of work to be done, especially, you know, working, getting our sauces into the United States and across Canada, it's a lot of work, you know, to meet the buyers and, you know, crunch the prices to try to get the best retail price for a high quality sauce out there. You know, so there's a lot of stuff uh, involved in distributing and in selling and in meeting these big buyers. And these things, they also take a lot of time uh, to get listed. You know, uh, in business today, uh, you know, be, you know, in order, you know, to start making real money, it takes five to seven years, right? So we're actually in our fourth year into our business, right? So we still have another three years to push, but eventually, once the sauce gets into all the major markets and our brand is better known, uh, I would love to have uh, my own uh, cooking show and you know, uh, showing people how to cook with healthy ingredients and how to make the best healthy homemade foods. Because the problem today, nobody has time to cook anymore. So everybody's buying processed foods, which really are not good for your health, right? So you see back in our day, uh, we all ate, you know, from we all come from Italian homes where, and even the Quebecois homes, uh, people had big families and they were eating at home and they weren't buying all this ready microwave your dish and you're ready to go, right? So everything was, you know, stovetop, oven top, and natural ingredients. So we want to get uh, to keep these traditions alive, especially the Italian traditions, where even the Italian the young girls don't cook as much anymore, right? So we want to show them uh, how to make these beautiful uh, recipes and not lose our Italian heritage. So uh, tell us from the very, very beginning, let's say that one jar of vegan sauce from the moment that tomato is picked 
to the moment it is on the shelf at your local IGA. How long does well, it take for a whole process? For well, the whole job? process starts by finding the, the, the raw material, right? So we, we looked hard and, and, and to find the right co-packer that uses uh, the best ingredients, right? So we were very fortunate to find our co-packer, uh, which only buys the best tomatoes from the south of Italy and the best ingredients. So then what happens is uh, we uh, do our own recipe. Well, what's important to know, I was the first to put on the market in Canada a vegan bolognese sauce. Of course, now everybody copies in this business, so you got to be very fast on your toes. Because, you know, the big, major, big millionaire companies, once they see a new thing, right away they copy you, you know? Exactly. Uh, but even though they copy you, the, uh, the advantage we have, these guys only think about price. So they buy uh, tomatoes from China and India, which they say Italian tomatoes, but really they come from China and from India, which are full of pesticide and full of OGMs. And a lot of them will buy tomato concentrate because, you know, tomato concentrate is not like tomato paste, right? Tomato concentrate is that they take the water out and then they put it back in. So that's why I tell you that, you know, 90% uh, of the sauces that you buy out there are 70% water, you know? But they say really Italian tomatoes, right? And so uh, I hate that they play a lot of tricks with the labels, like, you know, Le fromage de Petit Québec, you know, it's made in Ontario. You know, le, le jus de pomme, uh, rouge pomme, the apple, everybody thinks that they come from uh, Rougemont, the uh, apple orchards in Rougemont, but really the apples come from Argentina. When you're in the food business, you learn all these things. But what I want the public to know is that when you buy a Costa Vegan Bolognese sauce or our Sicilian marinara sauce, which is not vegan, not vegetarian, it's just, well, all sauces are are vegan or vegetarian, unless you put me in it. But our Sicilian marinara is one of the best out there. Uh, we won a contest with, with the number one marinara sauce in the States. It's Rao's. Rao's was a famous restaurant in New York where Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and all these guys uh, would go eat, right? So Rao's is the number one marinara sauce in the States. And we did a food... Uh, tasting contest with the best brands out there and uh, we, we won where our people chose our sauce uh, over that right so so these are all kinds of uh, things that we're very very proud about and again there you know what I want the public to know is when you buy a Costa Sicilian marinara or a Costa vegan bolognese sauce may it be our arrabbiata our roasted garlic tomato basil our Sicilian marinara or our original Bolognese Mild, uh, you're getting top quality homemade ingredients. I ha I'm going to invite the, uh, <clears throat> the audience to do something special. First of all, it's a great idea to go pick up some of this uh, uh, Costa Vegan Sauce. What my invitation is, folks, go on to the, uh, v uh, the CostaVeganFoods.com and go get your sauce. Take videos of you using the sauce and send them to Peter so he can get a sense of appreciation from uh, with your experiences. And maybe send him a little short video saying how much you like the sauce. How's that for you? Yeah, that's, well, what, what, but you know, it's funny you say it, but what amazes me, Bobby, on our Facebook feed and on our Costa Vegan Food uh, page, I'm the only guy that people, they go buy the sauce and they take a picture with themselves with the sauce, they <laughs> tell me where they bought it, and they post it on Facebook. That's so we're very happy movement. about that. Keep on doing that. Every time you find our sauce, post it or post the recipe or your meal that you made with the sauce. Also, uh, we added on our uh, uh, web page uh, recipes that you could use our sauces with, and, of course, some other uh traditional uh, Sicilian, Italian, and even some Greek recipes. We have a vegan spanatopica on our web page that you can make. So, you know, if you don't know what to cook and you want to uh, do some healthy recipes, go on our web page, click recipes, and pick one of our recipes. But we'll be adding 
more and more recipes as we go along. Are you considering, okay, you're talking about you want to go all the way across Canada, you want to go into the U.S. How about the Mexican market? Are you aiming for Mexico? It's funny that you say that because uh, my Florida representative lives in Cancun, Mexico. So we're also, and there's a Costco there, and there's a lot of Quebec products that are getting into Mexico, right? But again, there, uh, you got to work because you want to make sure that once it's on the truck, that it gets to the right place, right? <laughs> so, so there's all kinds of dangers. But uh, we will be in Mexico. And the other thing is that as we're penetrating the, uh, the American market, we also have a friend of our a chef that helps me do uh, basically the, the meatballs were uh, his recipe which called uh, Alex Morin, uh, which does the uh, hamburger vegan meat from Sapuram. So we're partners. And he also lives in Mexico. So we're thinking maybe in the future to have a plant in Mexico because yes. uh, labor is cheap there. And also they have as much sun as Italy. So we're thinking maybe of growing our tomatoes organic in the future in Mexico to deserve all of the United States. Well, that'd be a, well, actually all of Mexico, probably South America as well, and the United well, States. You know, well, you know, Mexico, uh, because of the uh, labor and because of the sunshine that they have, we could grow everything that we need in Mexico to make our sauce uh, because it's getting more and more expensive to import from Europe. Uh, it's just just crazy. So, of course, you know, I'm very proud to be Italian and I love to use the Italian products. The only thing is that, you know, we live in a world that everything goes up. And, of course, the cost of living goes up. So we want to try to offer the best quality for the best price. Have you actually considered selling your sauce in Italy? Yes, but it's a lot of complication. Like I said, we have we have uh, uh, permits to sell our sauce anywhere over the world. It's just uh, distribution and manufacturing that that where you have to wrinkle out the details because our manufacturer, you know, we only can produce so much sauce per week. So, you know that that talks about expanding, expanding, expanding. Uh, maybe one day we'll get to that point. Right now, we have the resources to go across Canada and the United States, which the United States is a very, very, very big market as well. And also the rules and regulations with the FDA, uh, you got to be on the ball with that as well. But everything is done right now for Canada and the United States. So you can't put yourself too much all over the place. We have many ideas which I expressed on this show tonight. But so far, we want to concentrate on getting our sauces across Canada and in the best states, uh, part of the United States that we can. So, Peter, uh, obviously, you are a very smart man. You're talented. You have many talents. Well, I'm not that smart. You know, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I do my best. You know, I do my best. I learn as I go along. Let's talk about Peter Costa outside of the tomato sauce business. Uh, you actually, uh, we're not asking you to sing on the show for the copyright uh, infringement uh, laws and all that, but you actually do some singing. You're a talented singer. And, yeah, uh, well, I, yeah, I love singing, and uh, and uh, it's part of. Uh, uh, I have a bit of a musical background. My uh, one of my cousins, Tony Bentivania, was the drummer for the group E Principi. So we were always uh, fascinated by music. And when I was in high school, I was a DJ. We oh. had our own disco mobile called uh, The Funk Machine uh, with Donato Di Renorfio, Tony Cacchese, and uh, Dario Di Teodoro. And we were booked every single weekend, weddings, parties. And, oh, wow. uh, and we also, I also was manager of Champagne Records which was on Chavalan Street back at the time. And we actually made an album in 1978 that we mixed. And I had wrote the, the first verse uh, to uh, Action 78. We mixed it all up. 
And uh, out of this association uh, came out uh, the song Love Disco Style. So if you go on YouTube and you put Action 78 Love Disco Style, you will hear that. And it was in, in the, the erotic drum band uh, with Mr. Marino uh, that took over, uh, did a great success with uh, uh, Love Disco Style, became number one. Uh, they won the trophy Meilleur Artiste de l'année at wow. La Disque and uh, they had sold over 50,000 copies here in Quebec so I was part of uh, of that team and uh, that was a very good experience as well Your signature, when we see Peter Costa automatically we associate you to that beautiful fedora you're wearing oh, When did yeah, it all start? Uh, when that... The fedora happened when I, when I did the Spé Presque Parfait uh, I decided to wear a different fedora every night of the show, right? <laughs> so it became kind of the of our trademark. So now, uh, and on the jar, my face with the fedora hat is on the jar. So we kind of made it our trademark, you know? So when you want a good sauce, look with Peter Costa's face on it and the fedora hat, and that's really our trademark, you know? So, Peter, where do we go from here? Um... You're into the the um, tomato sauce market. You're going to have new products coming out. Are you going to be branching out into some other entrepreneurship? Uh, right now, you know, in this business, if you scatter yourself, because, you know, I was thinking of opening up an Italian uh, uh, specialty boutique in Montreal. And basically, we wasted a whole year uh, trying to get this off the ground. And we were looking at a million dollar investment for what oh. we wanted to do. We had a, a grant from the Ville de l'Assomption. And that's where I saw that you cannot to do two things at the same time, right? Yes. So we lost a lot of time uh, and time is money, right? Uh, so now uh, after that experience, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot of what it takes to get a, a boutique off the ground. Uh but uh, we, you got to stick to one thing. Stick to what you love. Stick to the original plan. So basically what we're working hard for is to get our sauce, number one, across Canada, and then slowly, slowly to get it across the United States. So that's really basically where our focus is right now. You're in year four of your venture in the uh, Costa of Vegan Sauces. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? In 10 years, I would like our product to be on every major shelf in Canada and in the United States. I want the sauce to be like craft dinner, right? Any store you walk into, you know you're going to find it. So that's what we want to achieve. We want to achieve to be a national brand in the States and in Canada. The world, according to people. I want to be, well, put it this way, the next Chef Boyardee, but healthy Chef Boyardee of the 21st century. The world, according to Peter Costa, you have Carta Blanche. If you were running the world, what would you make it? What would you make the world uh, be? Well, if I was running the world, uh, I would bring back free speech. That's number one. <laughs> uh, and give the people more freedom and get rid of all the red tape. Uh, and uh, and get back to a community uh, loving people people you know i remember and, and i'm sure yourself as well when we grew up as italians everybody knew each other in the cartieri and if your okay. mother was at home there was your next door neighbor that would take care of you you know so everybody was looking out for each other and i would really like to bring that type of community back together you know uh where everybody can help each other and make things more easy for people you know uh, being business today uh, is is a lot of red tape, a lot of paperwork, a lot of rules and regulations. Uh, when you open a business, you know there's two partners that you don't want to have, which is the government of Quebec and the government of Canada. So that's another big part of uh, of it. So I would, you know, to make it a better world, of course, more peace, more love. More compassion be be beside your 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 human neighbor, you know. Uh, love thy neighbor like you know, like yourself. You know, uh, I'm a very spiritual guy, 
and uh, I try to be as humble as I can, and and I try to help uh, my next door neighbors, family, and friends as much as possible. Uh, I believe I believe in giving a lot. Can I ask you to stay behind the backstage? We're about to close off the show, and I'd like to invite you for the traditional meet and greet with our producer and our podcast technician. Can you stick around? Yeah, sure. I'll stick okay. around. So, Peter, you get the last word. You get to say bye-bye to the audience. Guys, thank you so much for joining the show tonight. Go out there. Try our sauce. Come and see us this Saturday if you're on the South Shore at Provigo Le Marché on King Street. I'll be there Saturday from 11 to 3. And uh, try our sauce. You won't regret it. Trying, uh, trying us is adopting us. Peter, thank you so much for being uh, among us, and uh, we'll be speaking to you in a few moments. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great night. There you have it, folks. That was our guest tonight, uh, Peter Costa, the founder of the Costa Vegan Foods, the tomato sauce, absolutely fantastic sauce. As he said, I'm just going to reiterate this upcoming Saturday. He's going to be at the Previgo Le Marché on the King George Street, at the corner of Roland Terrier in the Long Gay between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. It's something you don't want to miss. Trying this sauce is, like you said, adopting it. Thank you so much to everyone for tuning in this evening to Rob's Inner Circle. We, we invite you to be there next week, same time, same place, same reason. From now to then, stay healthy and be good. See you next week. Ciao.